good afternoon. Uh, this is Abhishek Kashkar. I am assistant professor of the Institute of Technology. And I am today I am going to discuss about the various aspects of uh, geometric design and uh, the pavement surface characteristics, everything that are related to the surface of the pavement. So highway cross section elements, it is concerned with pavement surface characteristics, camber and pavement carriageway width. So pavement surface, so when you are considering pavement surface, we are considering the most important aspects uh, which are friction, then the rainwater that is uh, that comes onto the surface of the pavement and uh, if rainwater is present on the surface of the pavement, it causes, uh, it reduces the friction and it is accident prone. So, pavement surface characteristics, the important uh, pavement surface characteristics are friction, pavement unevenness, light reflecting characteristics and drainage of the surface water. So, friction, it is, uh, it, it helps the uh, vehicle to accelerate or to decelerate or to start from a stop position or to come to the stopping position from when the vehicle is moving. Then light reflecting characteristics, the pavement surface, the color of the pavement surface should be such that both in the daytime and in the night time, it should not provide too much glare which causes uh, the driver, that is it causes hindrance to the eyes of the driver to drive the vehicle properly. Also the color of the road should not be very dark so that at night time it mixes with the surrounding. In that case it is difficult for the uh, driver to understand the that which way the road is going. Then drainage of the surface water, so immediately after rain, if the surface of the pavement is not dry, it, uh, the friction of the road is reduced and it may cause accident by skidding and slipping. So the first uh, term that you uh, come is uh, friction. So friction between vehicle tire and pavement surface is one of the most important factors determining the operating speed and the distance required in stopping, accelerating and decelerating the vehicles. This friction is known as longitudinal friction because it acts along the direction in which the vehicle is moving in when the road is straight. So for calculating stopping side distance, uh, the longitudinal friction coefficient values are uh, varying from 0 0.35 to 0 0.4 and this has been recommended by Indian Road Congress. Similarly, uh, friction also acts along the uh, lateral direction of the pavement. It acts in the longitudinal direction, it also acts in the lateral direction. But when the vehicle is moving straight, uh, lateral friction is not that much important. But when a vehicle is negotiating a horizontal curve, the friction developed in the lateral direction counteracts the centrifugal force and thus governs the safe operating speed. So if this friction is uh, not within, within the prescribed value, then instead of moving forward, the vehicle may skid to the in the lateral direction and may overturn and may cause serious accident. The Indian Road Congress has recommended this uh, lateral friction to be 0 0.15. Now when you are discussing uh, friction, two important terms comes into our consideration that is skid and slip. So first we come to skid. Now skid occurs when the wheel slides uh, without revolving. It means the brakes have been applied, uh, the wheels are locked, but instead of stopping, the vehicle continues to move in the forward direction. This occurs when the pavement surface cannot provide sufficient friction and cannot uh, stop the vehicle and the vehicle continues to move, means the wheels continues to slide, but they are in the locked position, semi-locked position or completely locked position. So the vehicle moves forward and this is known as longitudinal skidding and this takes place uh, maybe 0% to 100%. So this is very uh, dangerous and causes serious accident. Here the wheel rotation is less than 2 pi r. So when the vehicle is, uh, so this is uh, actually longitudinal skid. Also lateral skid uh, comes into play when the vehicle is uh, moving along a circular curve or a horizontal curve. So when the vehicle is moving a horizontal curve, the centrifugal force, it acts from the CG of the vehicle in the outward direction. So it becomes greater than the counteracting forces, that is the lateral friction, 
components of the gravity due to super elevation. So when this force becomes greater than the summation of the lateral friction and uh, component of gravity, then the vehicle continues to slide in the lateral direction. So this is lateral skidding and the lateral skidding is considered dangerous because the vehicle completely goes out of uh, control of the driver and it causes severe accident. Next we come to another important term that is slip or slipping. Uh, this, is also in, uh, this is also related to uh, friction of the pavement surface. So slip occurs when the wheel revolves more than the corresponding longitudinal movement along the roads. Slipping usually occurs in the driving wheel of the vehicle when the vehicle rapidly accelerates from stationary position or from slow speed on pavement surface which is either slippery or wet or when loose mud particles are present on the pavement surface. So actually what happens here, the vehicle is standing at a particular position, it is uh, trying to move in the forward direction but the wheels continues to revolve but the vehicle is not moving because the road is not, road pavement surface is not able to provide sufficient friction. Here the wheel rotation is more than 2 by r. So if we consider skid and slip, it is seen that skidding is more dangerous compared to slip because in skidding there is movement of the vehicle and the vehicle is out of control of the driver. And in case of slipping, the vehicle is not moving, it is standing at a particular position where the surface of the road is slippery, whether maybe there is oil or maybe there is loose smart particles and the wheels are rotating but the vehicle is not moving. So compared to skidding, slip is less dangerous. But both should be avoided when you are going to design any pavement or the surface of the pavement, both should, not, should be avoided. So our design should be such that neither skid nor slip occurs. There should not be any rain water present on the surface of the pavement after the rainfall has stopped. There should not be uh, less friction or the pavement surface should not be very smooth. Now next we come to the factors which affect friction or the skid resistance uh, and the factors which are uh, to be considered. So types of pavement surface that is now the pavement uh, there are various types of pavement like uh, RCC pavement or flexible pavement. RCC pavement is also known as rigid pavement. So rigid pavement, flexible pavement, waterbound macadam. So different pavement surface are tendons. So different pavement surfaces, different types of friction. So depending on the material with which the pavement is made, the amount of friction the pavement surface will give to the wheels of the vehicle that varies. The next point is condition of the pavement that is whether it is dry or whether it is wet, whether the pavement surface is very smooth or it is very rough, whether any oil spilling has occurred on the pavement surface or in case of earthen roads, if it is muddy after the rainfall, the surface has become muddy and whether there is dry sand is present on the pavement surface. So all these factors uh, are to be considered uh, to con uh, control the friction of the pavement surface. So type and condition of the tyre, now it also plays an important role. A new tyre will provide sufficient friction but a tyre which is very old and the threads of the tyre has worn out, in that case the friction will be less, the friction will reduce and it will be prone to accident. Next speed of the vehicle, so higher the speed, higher will be the chances of skidding and uh, lesser is the speed, the chances of skidding will be less. So speed of the vehicle plays an important role to uh, control the friction. Then extent of the application of brakes or which is also known as braking efficiency. Next we, another, next we come to the next point, the load and tire pressure. That is the vehicle uh, should be loaded with prescribed limit of uh, luggage or passengers. If it is heavily loaded then also it causes problem. Then temperature of the tire of the pavement, uh, of the tire and the pavement. So if the pavement surface is very hot during hot summer climate because of very high temperature or uh, the heat of the sun, it uh, causes the pavement to uh, get, get heated up. In that case, the friction gets altered. Uh, 
Now next we come to another important uh, uh, term which is related to surface of the pavement. It is known as pavement unevenness or undulations. So if the top surface of the pavement is irregular instead of being flat, it is said to be undulated or uneven. So it is measured as the cumulative vertical undulations per unit length and it is called undulation index. So the instrument which is used to determine the undulation index is called a bump integrator. So what is uh, pavement unevenness? It is actually that is instead of being a completely smooth surface, little bumps are present on the pavement surface. Uh, by looking at the pavement surface, uh, it is not possible to see whether it is undulated or not but if a vehicle moves over that pavement surface it can be felt that the road surface is undulated means bumps are present instead of smooth little bumps are present on the pavement surface. So what actually uh, unevenness causes is that it causes discomfort to the driver and the passengers. So <clears throat> there are some methods to measure the uh, unevenness of the pavement surface and it is known as bump integrator. Now, unevenness index, it is a value in centimeter per kilometer. Now, just now I told you that there are little bumps on the pavement surface. So, what the bump indicator does, when a bump indicator is on over a pavement surface, it measures the height of the small bumps that are present on the road surface and it goes on adding them. So, it goes on adding and uh, we get a value per kilometer. So here in the table you can see that first value is 150 centimeter per kilometer means the bumps that are present on the pavement surface their cumulative height is 150 is less than 150 centimeter in 1 kilometer. So when this is the scenario measured by the bump indicator for a pavement surface and uh, per kilometer unevenness in the index is 150 centimeter per kilometer that pavement is said to be a good pavement because if a vehicle runs over such a pavement there should not be uh, very uh, discomfort to the drivers the vehicle will run very smooth so that is why it is called a good pavement but when this unevenness index is greater than 150 centimeter per kilometer and less than 250 it is satisfactory up to a speed of about 100 kilometers per hour so when the vehicle is moving up to a speed of 100 kilometers per hour say it is 60 70 80 kilometers per hour then there should not be much discomfort the vehicle will move uh, more or less smoothly but when the speed crosses 100 centimeter 100 kilometers per hour in that case uh, discomfort may be felt by the drivers and the passengers so that is why when it is less than 250 it is satisfactory up to a speed of 100 kilometers per hour and when it is greater than 250 centimeter per kilometer it causes very discomfort to the passengers and the drivers even for a speed of 50 kilometers per hour. So, uh, as a transportation engineer, uh, we should design the pavement in such a way that undulation, undulation index is or unevenness index, it is always less than 150 centimeter per kilometer per smooth movement of the vehicles.